Hello there. The human ego is essentially a sense or perception of a separate self. What's wrong with this? Nothing really, but it does limit your perception a bit. Most especially because by virtue of having an ego, you are obviously going to perceive yourself as separate to every other thing in a time-space reality. You obviously identify yourself as you because you identify yourself as not this computer screen that you're watching this through, or this phone that you're holding in your hand, or your brother or your sister. You identify yourself as other. This isn't the ultimate truth about the reality that we live in. The ultimate truth is that we are all expressions of one infinite energy. This means while you perceive yourself as different to something, at the deepest level you are not different to it at all. All things in the universe are connected to you and are influencing you and affecting you. This is beneficial or detrimental depending on what it is that's affecting you. For a very elementary example, if you're not separate and somewhere in the world someone murders someone, that has a detrimental influence on the whole, and therefore you. If someone falls in love with someone, that has a beneficial influence on the whole, and therefore you. If you take into account the idea that at our most basic self, we are all one, and therefore everything is affecting us, we could use this to our advantage by deliberately seeking out, spending time around, being influenced by things that benefit us. Everything in the universe is made up of energy that vibrates. Energy that vibrates imparts or impacts information. The amplitude and frequency of energy is what determines how, in what form, that energy will express itself. We call this a vibration. So everything in the universe has its own unique vibration. The first physical manifestation of vibration is light. Light is the very first thing that contains both waves and particles. Particles are what we associate with solid objects. And color is really all about light. Color is about the way that light is either emitted or reflected or absorbed off of a particular thing, including a vibration. So obviously, if all things have a different vibration, light interacting with that vibration is going to be perceived as a different color. This is why people have different aura colors. This is also why chakras have different energies. For more information about this, watch my video on YouTube titled How to See Auras. In this world, entrainment is essentially the law of harmony. Simply put, it's that any two vibrating bodies will entrain with one another if exposed to each other for long enough. Entrainment works massively to our advantage because it means that anything you are in the space of for long enough, you begin to entrain with. This has serious implication in a world where everything in existence is energy vibrating. This is why, for example, married couples begin to look alike after years together. Things that are exposed to one another synchronize. This concept works for absolutely everything. It is the foundation behind sound therapy, it is the foundation behind homeopathy, and it is the foundation behind color therapy. How does this work relative to colors? It means that if you share space with a color, pretty soon you start to entrain with that color. Your own vibration starts to basically vibrate at the same frequency of that color that you are wearing, focusing on, spending time around. This in turn aids you to amplify and manifest anything that is a vibrational match to the frequency of that color in your life. Color therapy, also known as light therapy or chromotherapy, is not just new age hooey. It's a very serious healing technique. Now essentially how it works is that color or light is used in order to influence a person's mental, emotional, or physical well-being. It's still considered an alternative modality, which frustrates me, of course. <laughs> but what we have to understand is that it's a serious therapy that some people study for years to fully understand and perfect. I could never cover all of the information about color therapy in an episode like this, just like it would take me years or more to explain all there is to know about astrology. But let this video serve as an in-depth primer. Okay, one thing we have to understand about light, and therefore color, is that it doesn't just enter our being through our eyes. It actually 
is absorbed through our skin as well. So even if you are completely blind, color therapy would still work for you because it is permeating your body as a vibration, even if you cannot directly visually see that color. It's just that when you look at a color, that has impact on your brain and instantaneous. It's much more, let's say, instant gratification. An association is a very powerful thing. The minute we come into this world, we start to form associations. That's how the brain learns how to stay safe and how to categorize things. So for example, let's say you were born into a society that says pink is for girls. You've now formed an association between pink and girliness. Or let's say that you spend time in a white hospital room. And let's just say that you're the odd person who feels really crappy in a hospital room. So you associate those feelings of terror and powerlessness and isolation with that hospital room, which happens to be white. Your mind forms an association between that color and that feeling of powerlessness and terror and isolation. So maybe white can be an amazing vibration in and of itself, but because you have formed an association with it that's negative, you will feel negative about the color white. We can build up strong preferences and aversions towards certain colors in this way. This is why political candidates have teams of people who select what color shirt they're going to wear to what occasion. It's important to take associations into account when we're thinking about color therapy, because the association we have with a color is not necessarily a direct or accurate reflection of the unique vibration that that particular color holds. It's just that the association is overpowering our capacity to perceive the innate vibration that exists in that color, separate of our bias towards or against it. Now, that being said, noting people's preferences or aversions towards a color is an amazing window into their subconscious. It's a window into the things that are unseen about this person to the naked eye. Aversions, for example, can tell you ailments that a person might have, or strengths. Same with preferences. For example, a strong preference for the color blue could mean that a person is naturally anxious or stressed and really needs calming. It could mean that they're introspective and desire to understand others. It could also mean that this person is struggling with inflammation disorders. I could write an entire book on what preferences and aversions to certain colors might mean about a person and the state they're in physically, mentally, or emotionally. But I'm not going to do that today. Because of the impact I want this video to have, instead, I'm just going to share with you my perspective about how you could use each color to benefit your life. Given that I'm an extrasensory, I might have a different color assessment than other color experts that you have listened to. I'm just going to come at you with my perspective as an extrasensory, watching vibrations, watching the way that the vibration of certain colors interact with humans and their particular vibration. I'm going to tell you what I notice in terms of the interaction and the unique innate vibrations of each color. Okay, to begin with, we're going to go towards white and black. Now, white and black are very odd colors in the spectrum. They are the colors that are the most close to source frequency itself. Why is that? Because both white and black are not individual colors. Instead, they are something that we perceive as a result of all colors interacting with a specific substance. Essentially, one reflects all and absorbs none, the other absorbs all and reflects none. When light strikes a white crayon or a white board, it appears white to us because it absorbs no color and reflects all color equally. For this reason, it is the color of purity and peace. It has been used for thousands of years to break curses, for divine healing. It is also why it is the color most associated with the angelic realm. It is the vibration of pure consciousness. It brings to your life purity, justice, perfection, faith, innocence, the highest form of reflectivity, nothingness, divinity, harmony, neutrality, peace, truth, inspiration, and clarity. Black. A black crayon or marker absorbs all colors equally and reflects no color, so it looks black to us. While most of us consider black a color, it isn't actually a color. It is the absence of all color. It is the color of potential energy and oneness. It has been used for thousands of years in conjunction with the esoteric and the occult. It brings to your life origin energy. 
perspective, protection, respect, solidness, seriousness, integrity, mystery, and power. Red. Red brings stimulation, determination, survival, leadership, ambition, motivation, desire, surety, warmth, blood flow, adrenaline, strength, movement, vigor, the capacity to reach one's goals, sensuality, sexuality, passion, progress, courage, bravery, metabolism, independence, potency, competition, revolution, and a solid sense of self. Orange. Orange brings freedom, success, encouragement, willpower, triumph, creativity, enthusiasm, fascination, fertility, increased oxygen uptake, new possibilities, triggers, vitality, action and momentum, endurance, expression, respiration and digestion, intensity, invigoration, luck, achievement, investment, dynamic, indulgence, and fun. Yellow. Yellow brings joy, cheer, lightness, intellect, optimism, stimulation for the nervous system, zest for life, awakeness, attention, curiosity, flexibility, affirmation, lightheartedness, freshness and newness, socializing, wonder, awe, aliveness, spontaneity, and healthy physicality. Oftentimes when there is an ailment in the physical body, the energy or auric field around that area will show up as a very unhealthy shade of yellow. Conversely, when that area is healthy, it will show up as a very healthy, vibrant, and clear shade of yellow. Green. Green is a healing color. It heals by virtue of rejuvenating. It also both soothes and invigorates. Green brings rejuvenation, generosity, reliability, dependability, restoration, sympathy, healing, safety, harmonizing, recovering, nature, well-being, judgment, authenticity, honesty, growth, basics, understanding, hope, prosperity, balance, observation, home, comfort, and connection, cellular regeneration, and a healthy mindset. Blue. Blue is also a healing color. It heals by virtue of soothing. It brings soothing, cooling, decreases inflammation, quiet, reliably, no, reliability, calming, relaxation, sharing, tranquility, rest, gentle but powerful speech, patience, purpose, expertise, integrity. Depth, trust, loyalty, sincerity, truth, sharing of wisdom and truth, and seeing things clearly. Purple. Purple is a healing color, but it heals by virtue of transformation. It is both stabilizing and motivating. Purple brings supernatural, transformation, elegance, guidance, decadence, insight, the possession of wisdom, nobility, spirituality, inner knowing, absence of opposition, and dignity. Pink. Pink brings softness, compassion, gratitude, affection, caring, tenderness, friendship, gentleness, getting along, youthfulness, kindness, nurturing, romance, and emotional caretaking. Brown. Brown brings the energy of the earth, groundedness, rationality, stability, discernment, conservation, decisiveness, support, belonging, 
frugality, comfort, community, responsibility, practicality, simplicity, and family. Gray. Gray forces disarmament and non-attachment. It is a deactivator. Gray brings indifference, self-control, stalemate, control, conservativeness, neutrality, compromise, transition, lack of movement, reservation, fixedness, tact, moderation, composure, and refinement. Silver. Silver brings feminine power. It is both giving and receiving. It invites the energy of the moon. Silver brings psychic abilities, intuition, reflectivity, prosperity, sensitivity, healthy cycles, divine receptivity, magic, and healthy emotion. Gold. Gold brings masculine power. It invites the energy of the sun. It brings authority, empire, self-confidence, wealth, overcoming, prestige, illumination, winning, luxury of abundance, the power of aliveness, and the healthy ego. Every color influences your mind, your body, and your emotions. Every shade and every hue within these colors has a slight variation in their meaning and their impact on you. It's why you will love turquoise and not really like dark blue. Also, every ailment you have has an associated color, and every cure also has an associated color. But you don't have to take it from me. Instead, look within yourself. I want you to start to notice how colors affect you on an energetic level. How do they make you think? How do they make you feel? both emotionally and physically. I want you to ask yourself, what does the way I feel towards this color, whatever that color may be, my preference or my desire to avoid it, tell me about myself. Knowing this, you can choose to focus on where or surround yourself with any color that you feel you need the influence of at any given time. So feel free to do this today. Start experimenting with color therapy and celebrate your life with color. Have a good week.